Private Internet Access is an awesome low-cost VPN service with unlimited data for just $2.91 a month. Grab yourself a copy today at the link below and start browsing privately. Hey, what's up guys? CP Modder here back with another video and today we're checking out the Bros Trend AC1200 dual band wireless card. A budget option that really offers some good features and specs that you might expect to get only in more expensive cards. So kicking things off in the design department, we are looking at a half height PCIe card design allowing you to add it to both low profile PCs and also to full size ATX towers without any problems here. Just simply switch out the backplate and it is really easy to do. That is a big plus for me. Now just like a few other wireless cards that we've checked out a little while ago but we've still checked out nevertheless, this guy is not only a wireless card but also too comes with the wireless antenna base. So the package that you get in the box is really well all rounded for whatever you may be doing and this definitely plays into a really good design. Speaking of that base, it is made out of a solid feeling plastic and incorporates a very strong set of magnets in it with soft felt under underneath so you can actually attach it to any point in the case as long as it is made out of metal. So if you want to attach the antennas to the top of the case, the side of the case, the front of the case, it is really up to you or maybe you have like a metal shelf next to your computer, bang you can throw it up there which is something I do really like. And a big plus in this all design is well you can actually go ahead and put it on there without worrying because the felt feet and the felt base actually stops any scratches so I really do like this. I was even able to put it to the side of my painted computer computer and there was not a single scratch on it. A big thumbs up from me. Personally, I really do like this design as it well allows you to attach the tanners uh, to the back of the PC if you did really want to or you could extend them up and use that base plate to try and get to a bit more better place to go ahead and place those antennas. Going back to the card itself, it is not too bad. However, it is really going to stand out like a sore thumb unfortunately thanks to the fact that it does have a red uh, PCB. Don't get me wrong, it is a 1x slot design so to fit in obviously a 1x slot but you could also to put it in 8 and 16x slots uh, respectively uh, and it can easily fit underneath the video card. I actually used a GPU in my setup just to hide it so it wouldn't stand out like a sore thumb and it worked pretty much fine. As most computers when you look in the side window uh, you're going to be looking on a down angle and if you hide it right up underneath a video card hey you don't even see it but uh, speaking of design as we are in that part of the video I would have really liked to have seen the PCB just just to be black. Red, don't get me wrong, I do really love the red colour, but it doesn't fit into every build out there, so that was a little bit of a disappointment. Anyway though, that sort of rounds out design. It's really, really simple, gets the job done, and is red, so do keep that in mind. Anyway, jumping into the specs department, we are looking at again aforementioned PCIe 1X interface for our connection here, and the half height uh, design allows us to fit again in both small and large systems. Now this is really great for specs as you don't really have to worry about whether it'll fit in your computer because it will just fit in your computer and uh, doesn't look too bad. Now taking a closer look at the actual card itself we do find ourselves well here is the wireless chipset and it is covered up by a small little cover and if you've seen this channel for any amount of this time you know we're gonna get that cover off. Well at least we were gonna try and get it off. Unfortunately it looks like it is soldered to the actual uh, chipsets underneath and whilst I was going ahead and trying to desolder it with a massive soldering iron which was just an absolute nightmare, I should never have really started it. I did also to notice that this acts as a heatsink as there is a big glob of thermal paste between what appears to be the wireless chipset and the top of this guy. So uh, this little metal plate also to acts as a heatsink which is definitely something that is not too bad as we all do know that high-end Wi-Fi solutions do kick out a bit of heat and seeing that we've got a little bit of heat dissipation here does give us a little bit of a hint what is to come in the performance department. So as I did mention I was a little bit unfortunately lucked out when it came to trying to get the cover off so I did break out my soldering iron to try and reveal what is underneath and after burning my fingers like three times because the soldering points were so small and realizing I didn't have a soldering iron heat gun thing um, I kind of gave up on that department and just went ahead and threw it in my computer and opened up device manager to see what 
what was under the hood. So yeah, maybe we need to invest in some better soldering gear for next time we do one of these videos. Anyway, going ahead and actually taking a look at Device Manager to see what kind of chipsets are in there. We are looking at the Realtek 8812AE wireless chipset supporting dual band streams, 802.11ac solution, and according to the website anyway, is a complete on-chip package for high performance solutions. Or at least again, that's what Realtek does claim. Now speaking of claims, taking a look at the box now, we do find the box actually claims that 867 megabytes per second on the 5 gigahertz stream and 300 megabytes per second on the 2.4 gigahertz space. Now, do keep in mind the actual name of this card, I mean, I'm pretty sure you can see it from here, is 1200. You might be thinking, how do you get 1200 from this particular spec? Well, if you add the 5 gigahertz plus the 2.4 gigahertz, as what a lot of manufacturers do, you kind of get up close to that 1.2 gigabyte per second rating. And unfortunately, Mm, very few of us can actually use both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz together because it's really not how these products are designed, but Theoretically speaking anyway, it is 1.2 gigabits per second or 1200 megabits per second. Uh, the antenna array cable is approximately one meter as the box does go ahead and spec out and the antennas themselves are standing at 200 millimeters. But okay then, we've taken a look at some of the specs, we've taken a look at some of the specs on the box, we've done some interneting. Let's go ahead and take a look at the performance. So for testing today, we have my wireless router set up in the next room over and we're doing testing right here in the studio. Uh, the wireless router is around about five to seven meters away from where the computer is actually set up that is separated by a single reinforced drywall. Um, I did also to run some tests where it was just like router and then the PC right next to each other and found very similar numbers so uh, we are going on what we do find here. So first off was just a standard speed test. Let's get on the internet, go over to speed test and do ourselves a speed test. Now the office internet here is rated at 100 by 40 megabits per second. Taking a look at our numbers here from the Google speed test, damn, that is not bad at all. When we compare our speed test here to our LAN speed test, on the exact same day, it wasn't too bad. Sure, ping was a little bit higher, but all in all, the actual test that we got on Wi-Fi wasn't that bad. Now let's face it though, 84 by 35 on Wi-Fi is not bad compared to 89 by 34 on a LAN connection. Um, but once we do factor in overheads and that kind of stuff, it is basically the 100 by 40 that we do pay for here in the office. And if you're wondering why the Wi-Fi upload was faster than the LAN upload, it just basically comes down to run-to-run -run differences. Um, I mean, I ran the test like five different times and sometimes the LAN one, sometimes the Wi-Fi one, but they were all within that same range. So uh, I do have to say, it's just kind of a run to run variance rather than Wi-Fi being better than LAN or LAN being better than Wi-Fi in this particular case. But that's not too bad. I mean, we have the fastest residential internet connection here in Australia in the office. So honestly, it's not exactly that much of a challenge to get like 100 megabits per second. I mean, this thing's claimed at 800. We really need to put some stuff to the test. So I went ahead and set up a local server, uh, which I grabbed two SSDs and put them in RAID 0. They were NVMe RAID 0 SSDs, by the way, which has insane throughput. I also used a full gigabit backbone to the actual computer itself. So really the only bottleneck in the entire system would be the wireless card itself. And, well, I downloaded LAN speed test and here are our results. As we can see here, it actually went really, really well. I could do about three runs before the actual router itself thermal throttled and slowed down the speeds. Uh, the wireless card itself was perfectly fine. I could touch it, there was no overheating issues. Whereas the wireless router I was using was like third degree burns level hot. So, um, yeah, we may need to upgrade the office router because it didn't really keep up with what we were trying to do right here. The access point was fine and the switch was fine that I was using, but the router, ooh, that almost caught fire. There's a little bit concerning there. Now, yes, we were not able to achieve the 867 megabits per second as claimed on the box, but I do have to say that what we did find of 640 by 750 megabytes per second is definitely not bad and equals around that 90 megabytes per second, which is pretty typical of gigabit networking speeds. Uh, once you factor in things like Windows overhead, network overhead, and all that kind of stuff, we're basically at the limits of what this thing can actually do. And again, 
yeah, it was kind of disappointing, only 647 megabits per second, but I do have to say it isn't too bad, and the 750 that we did get on the download was perfectly fine and very, very close to what the box actually claims, which is a big thumbs up from me. And compared to a run that is over a LAN cable, we also do found very similar results, although for some reason I don't exactly know what the uh, testing program was doing because somehow, even though our networking is only gigabit, we were able to get over a gigabit, so maybe the readings were a little bit high, but Either way, we did get very decent numbers here. And this was also due backed up by Real World. In fact, this video right now uh, will be stored on that NBME server and I'll just edit it straight off the network. And unless I suddenly cut in right now, I'm guessing I had absolutely no problems right here. And to top this off, when it comes to gaming, there's also two absolutely no problems here. Again, real world file transfers were fine. Jumping into video games, there was basically identical ping uh, to what we did find on a wide network. And when I had and did just general gameplay, first person shooters like CSGO, absolutely perfectly fine. I didn't notice any major problems that came that running over Wi-Fi versus running over a LAN connection. Don't get me wrong, Wi-Fi in general is just inherently not as good as a wide LAN connection, but using this guy versus another high-end option, I'd have to say, wasn't too bad here. Now you may have noticed at this point, the wireless antennas are pretty big and pretty beefy and also do come with this like extension wire thingy. Does it really do anything? Well, in terms of actual speeds itself, it doesn't exactly make it faster or slower but what it does do is increase range ever so slightly. So for example, when I had the antennas plugged into the back of the PC case down in the corner of the testing room, uh, it was getting about three out of four bars connection. Whereas once I put the antenna base on and actually raised that connection up to the top of the PC where it had a nice flat area, it was able to get full reception. So there's definitely situations where having some sort of base that allows you to lift those antennas up out of the back of the PC, because let's face it, the back of the PC and the PC like spread area is not a great place for antennas, period. So being able to release it up to a place that is a lot better for wireless signals is something that I do really like. And even, uh, for instance, when I took the actual computer downstairs to a bit of a black spot in this particular house, it sits underneath the bathroom and then there's another bathroom and it's like, yeah, not really that great for our wireless signals, I was able to go ahead and actually use the base plate and lift up the antennas, again, away from that piece like express area into a place that is a little bit better for wireless signals and we went from two bars to three bars. So that is really, really nice. Don't get me wrong, if I just lifted up the computer to the same height and had it on the same angle, I got the same results, but no one's gonna be sitting at their desk lifting up their computer to get better wireless signals. We're just gonna grab a base plate and be completely done here. Um, I do recommend going ahead and spending about 10 to 15 minutes when you do buy one of these things, uh, just playing around with different configurations, trying with the antennas on the PCI Express slot versus up on the base plate on the side or something like that. Um, because there is definitely a chance that maybe you don't need that plate and uh, going ahead and just running it straight out of the card is perfectly fine for you. In terms of actual speed differences, I didn't notice anything different. Uh, I re-ran all the numbers that we did right here and didn't find any differences between going straight into the card versus over the cable. So if you're worried about losing any performance, I didn't notice any drop right here. Ping was the same, latency was the same, which is basically the same thing, uh, jitter was the same. Every kind of measurable number I could get was exactly the same. Same, almost exactly the same uh, as when I ran it on that base plate. So honestly, I wouldn't be worried too much. So this all sounds really good. What are some of the drawbacks with this particular card? Well, honestly, there's not exactly that many. I do have to mention that, yes, unfortunately it does have a red PCB, but all in all, there's not that much to dislike about this particular card. And for the fact that it comes out for such a low price point, it is not that bad at all. Sure, the red PCB, which is the biggest problem that I do have, was cooled back in 2006, but we're here in 2018 with RGB everywhere and just a simple black PCB would have been a whole lot better. But hey, color doesn't actually affect performance and if you can tuck it up underneath a video card, it is perfectly fine for that. I guess another gripe that I might have with this guy is it would have been nice to be able to switch off that little LED. Sure, it wasn't that annoying, but especially if you have a very specific color theme and you don't want any single LEDs that aren't matching your color scheme, uh, it would be nice to turn that off rather than having to desolder it and take it off that way. Would have been nice there, but all in all, 36 bucks and the performance that we did get out of this guy, I'm definitely having a hard time criticizing this guy. 
because it just does what it says on the box. It's not making any crazy claims like quadrupling your super speed networking or anything like that, but honestly, it just gets the job done. And there are products that are double, triple, even quadruple the price uh, of this particular guide that offer the same specs, same features, and same functionality. But we paid just $36 for this guy. And I have to say, I'm really impressed for what we do get right here. And it does definitely make a good addition uh, to your system. In fact, after recording this video, I'm gonna be taking it straight out of that box right there and throwing it in my personal rig as it's just awesome to have an extra connection, whether it be for troubleshooting, extra interfaces, or something like that for such a low price point. But do keep in mind, it did have good performance today, but that is because the rest of my network also too performs good. So networks are as only as fast as the slowest point in the network. So if the wireless card is the slowest point, it's gonna be pretty fast. But if you've got a slow router, a slow switch, slow cabling, slow anything else, you'll be experiencing slowdown that won't be the fault of this particular card. And I guess that then brings us to the TDL DW uh, of this review. The Bros Trend AC1200 uh, is actually not bad card and comes in with a really good price tag. For just $36, it offers a robust Realtek 8812AE chipset, a long one meter cable to the little base platform that allows you to raise up those antennas. And that base platform features magnets to attach to wherever you want on the computer, but also to felt feet so it doesn't scratch wherever you attach it to that computer. The PCI Express slots were interchangeable, so you can go ahead and actually put a half height or a full height, so no matter what computer you have will be perfectly fine. And synthetic numbers were perfectly fine through speed tests and also to land speed tests and jumping into real world situations like playing video games such as CSGO, which are definitely reliant on good network connections. Uh, all in all was definitely perfectly playable and I found a very little to no noticeable differences between Wi-Fi and our LAN connection here. Again, keep in mind, whilst I did experience good performance here today, just adding a good wireless card doesn't make up for bad switches, bad cabling, and also to bad other network components. If you are experiencing slow networks at home, do look into your network as a whole rather than just one individual part because chances are maybe the Wi-Fi card will help, maybe it won't help. But in my situation here with a good rest of the network, this guy absolutely performed really well. And if I had to sum up my experience in a simple statement, uh, I would have to say I'm really impressed. For $36, I wasn't expecting as much as what I did get here. So big thumbs up for me and I will be putting it in my personal rig. But um, speaking of that, let's go ahead and do a giveaway. Let me know down in that comment section if you want me to give one of these cards away. I'll try and hit up Bros Trend to see if they'll uh, get on board with this guy because I really do like it and I reckon you guys will like it as well. So let me know if you want a giveaway down in that comment section. If you want to pick one up, I've left it linked in that description box. But uh, thanks guys for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.